Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Benjamin Magnus and Bundesverba play Hearts of Iron 3. I'm not exactly sure where we left off last time. I just know that there's lots of Soviets in Siberia, and that I'm I'm hoping that Bob can take... Did you take Leningrad? No, you, you're taking Leningrad right now. I'm in the process of doing it. It's It'll be a thing that'll happen. I don't know if it'll happen in this episode or the next one or the one after that, but by God, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I would suggest is is taking the Panzers and and replacing them with infantry in the assault because tanks have a pretty hefty combat debuff in urban combat, but infantry do not. So infantry, so they'd be more useful attacking uh, some lines rather than getting bogged down in a city. And what the fuck is this? Oh yeah, Belarus, and Lithuania. <laughs> Lithuania and the, the Belarusian tumor they have for some reason. God, that that's so weird looking. <laughs> I th I think the border goal will lessen once you uh, properly overrun all of the land that is Belarusian, so that there's less less combinations of colors on the screen. <laughs> all right, so what was I doing? Okay, Burma. I was fighting in Burma, like you do. Oh, I've had a lot of people, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people asking me, Ben, why aren't you making puppets? Why am I not making puppets? And the thing is, is that the because of the way supplies move, they don't cross borders. So if there is puppets in the way, not only will the supplies uh, not go move in a sensical manner, but I can also not build inside my puppets. I can't build infrastructure inside my puppets. So by keeping all the land under control myself, yes, I have to deal with rebels myself, which is annoying, but it means that I can properly supply units on the front. So that's why. Oh, for, the game chugged for a second there. I was like, oh, don't tell me you just crashed. <laughs> don't crash, you son of a bitch. Exactly. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of praying to RNG Jesus when you're playing Hearts of Iron 3. So the Soviets did uh, uh, actually defeat me in one battle over here. They, but it was it was like an entire Soviet army versus one division. So it wasn't. Why'd you let that happen? I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying close enough attention to what was going on. I, but uh, I'm in a, I'm in a slightly better position than I was before because now I can get my my tanks into combat pretty soon. Uh, but all my combat's pretty slow at the moment. Just because it's it's jungles and um, uh, in 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 Siberia and all that sorts of stuff, so everything's pretty pretty slow in in Magnus Land. We are moving into winter, and my my advance is going to be stalling out here soon enough. Yes, yes, it most certainly is. In fact, I think we're pretty much kind of holding ground that we got right now. As once the winter modifiers set in, attacks become pretty suicidal. But what it, all, it means it's suicidal for the other side as well. I mean, the Soviets, I don't think they get uh, penalties that are as bad as the Germans, but there are, they are still pretty hefty debuffs to combat. So defending the territory you've taken is not too terribly difficult. Um, but it, it, what it does is it allows you to kind of reorganize your order of battle, get everything back uh, into a cohesive pattern, and plan your next offensive. Like, where move your panzers where they need to be, move your uh, assault troops or marines or whoever might be. Uh, and used to where they need to be. I love that the the R Romanian Navy is just patrolling the Black Sea. Like, this is mine. This is my bathtub. No Soviets allowed. They do a good job. Mm -hmm. So I heard you're playing Kaiserreich for I, I, Hearts of Iron 4. I, I have started playing Kaiserreich. And uh, there are some things I'm liking. Uh, but m mostly that... I don't know exactly what's going to happen, which is which is interesting, um, and and trying to you know kind of figuring out what's going on in the world because it's this you know fantasy situation. Um, but I, I mean, it, it, while I'm enjoying the fact that I don't know exactly what's happening and that the focus trees are pretty cool, where where your decisions actually impact the game in in some way. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, you can't. There's a lot of mutually exclusive trees on the focuses. So you actually have to think about your decisions, but it still suffers from the the like core issue that uh, 
Hearts of Iron 4 suffers, and that is combat is just boring as all fuck. It's just watching goddamn paint dry. <laughs> Like, I, what, what, uh, well, I'm not going to say exactly what happened so I don't spoil it for the people watching on my end, but, um, you know, when I went to, when I finally did get, get to go to war, it was, it was basically just like, okay, I have three armies on three fronts, and I draw a line here, and I draw a line there, and I hit go, and I win, you know, an hour later. It's, there's no tactics involved, there's barely any strategy involved, it's, oh, I have, I, I built more guns than my enemy did, so I won the war, and that's basically the gist of it. And it's just a little sad that that is ba what, what combat is. There's no strategy involved. There's definitely no tactics involved. It'd be nice if there was a little bit more to it, but there's not. It is an improvement, though. I'll say that. It is an improvement. And they have done a fantastic job with the mod. It is very, for, for, you know, being pretty early, it is polished as all hell. Did you ever play the, uh, the Darkest Hour version of it? I did not play the Darkest Hour of it, but I mean to because I, I thoroughly enjoy what it's done for Hearts of Iron 4, so I'd imagine it's very good. I have been meaning to go back to Darkest Hour a lot, but there's just ne there's never enough, uh, never not, uh, as many hours in the day as I would like to do all the things I want to do. Huh. That'll be changing for me too, actually, here soon. Well, I will have less time, probably. Mm -hmm. Did you? Did you Bob, find? Bob some is going to be going off and getting. It. Not yet, but that's what I'm. That's today, actually. I've got four different interviews lined up. There's um, you can walk down the one of the roads that's very close to me here, which is like a like a just a just a highway, that's here, and you will see like for hiring signs or hiring now signs Ever. fucking everywhere. everywhere. It's just ridiculous. No, oh, you know what we need to do is turn back on Automate Trade. Oh, yeah, because that's the thing that you're supposed to do. Automate Trade, do that. Soviet Union, add Wargle, uh, retake our cores. Yeah, I want that. I want my cores yeah, back. I'll be, I'll be taking a job like a normal person here soon enough. You bastard. Just something part-time. I've got I've got a few things that are going to be... I mean, I've, I've got my, my fingers in a lot of little different pies in a few places. So, uh, you know, like I'm doing the YouTube thing. Uh, I... I've I've mentioned it before to some people, but I don't know if I've actually like said like I do trade like on the stock market a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just started mining Ethereum too. Oh, okay. You playing World of Warcraft again or something? <laughs> no, we were talking a little bit about I think cryptocurrency like a few episodes ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I I had gone down like the cryptocurrency like rabbit hole mm -hmm. before. And uh, I've got a far better understanding of what it is and what it's trying to accomplish now than I did before. But before my uh, <clears throat> my understanding was that it was just a it was a like, fuck you. We're a fiat currency too. We just happen to be digital. Was kind of my impression of it initially. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's actually trying to solve some uh, like systemic world problems with how like wealth is managed in the world, which is just pretty asymmetrical. So I'm I'm. I'm eager to see what success it'll have. I don't know if it will be successful at all. But, uh, like, uh, it's impossible for... Well, I shouldn't say impossible. But it's it's really not worthwhile for the average person to mine Bitcoin, which is kind of like the... It was the first cryptocurrency that was out there. Yeah. And there's a finite amount of it out there, like, period. You know, like there's, there's only, like, 21 million Bitcoins or something like that, I think I read. Well, and they're that worth will, a like, small ever, fortune ever be now. Built. Yeah, each Bitcoin, it be, each each coin, I think is like two thousand dollars. I think right now, it's a lot. Well, and I remember, I remember when I first heard about it, they were worth like sixty bucks. I think we were talking yeah. about it. In one of the, I don't remember what we was it. I think it was in the U four series we we're doing. We were talking about it, or still like the first transaction. Somebody bought a pizza for like two thousand Bitcoins or something like that. The equivalent of like ten million dollars now. Yeah, <laughs> there's also a guy who uh, he had bitcoins on his hard drive and he threw out the hard drive. Oh, so somewhere out there in just like a landfill is a hard drive with like like two million bucks on it or something. Yeah. Say I don't I I can't ever bring myself to throw out like old computer hardware. 
I, I'm sure in my, like, in a box in my closet right now, I could go assemble, like, one and a half PCs out of old, <laughs> old components, because, like, I don't know why, like, oh, I've had this hard drive installed for six years. I have seen... Dude, you should put a miter together. Sentimental value. You should put a mining rig together. Oh, yeah, it, I mean, I could literally put together a shitty, <laughs> shitty PC for old components laying around. Yeah, mine's some Ethereum. It seems so... It doesn't seem like a real thing. <laughs> Well, just it because doesn't, it's called but Ethereum. The, well, I don't know what else you would call it. I mean, internet dollar? <laughs> well, obviously, web ducats. Web ducats. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see why that's how, where, where the confusions are coming from, Bob. That's pretty clear. <laughs> that, that's definitely... I need a, God, maybe I should put that on a shirt somewhere, too, because uh, the, duck, the ducat goes everywhere now. <laughs> The, uh, but Ethereum, I, I, I was finding out, well, really all these cryptocurrencies, well, mo well, the ones that are reputable anyway, the idea is that they're, they're providing decentralized, not, uh, not wealth really so much as, you know, access to be able to kind of like resolve trade in mm -hmm. a way. Yeah. You know, the idea isn't to simply be some holding currency for an investor to get a hold of and then, you know, yeah, now I've got Bitcoin in my portfolio, look at me go. Like, that's not the idea of it. It's really kind of this idea. There's there's kind of more of an, an anarchy kind of vibe to it in, in the background, which is that, like, it's like, fuck banking. Yeah, no. Fuck Wall Street, you guys suck. That's the gist I, I get from it, which uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily... Uh, have Harper with. Oh man, the Soviets are strong, Bob. The <laughs> boy is strong. Well, they they've they they they've they filtered in a lot of troops over here. <laughs> like entire like armored armies are showing up. It's getting scary. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Have you have you looked over here recently? I have not. Let me Wait, go like, there. Just take a look at like some of the stacks that are showing up in Mongolia. I'm not seeing a lot. There's huge stacks of Panzers. Oh, there they are. I was about to say, there's, there's stacks that maxed out the size of the stacks. They don't get any stackier. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm almost uh, about to take second Well, look more. at this way. That's that That's that many less tanks that I don't, I don't have to deal with now. Well, that, that was the whole plan, Moscow. but it's a little scarier than I anticipated. <laughs> the plan was to well, relieve pressure on you. Well, you're doing a great job. I, I I do what I can. Well, I will say that the Soviets are doing their damnedest to try to bust through some of these lines over here that I've got in the south. Mm -hmm. Do I have money? I might need. I got to put some more infantry divisions on the on the queue here. Oh, there's some motorized divisions. Let's uh, let's queue up some new divisions right now. Uh, that that allows one more. Next brigade, armor, motorized, border guards, sniffle. Uh, infantry, artillery, anti tank, heavy AA. Boom. Fuck you, Soviet uh, doodles. Major victory. Yeah, let's get some more of these going. Uh, wow. Just won a, won a major battle in um, in Burma. We lost sixty two hundred men. The British, there were, I think these are the Australians, lost thirty thousand. Well, good job, them. Yeah, uh, fuck you guys. The mountain that's, that's what we like to see on the axis: is the Allies throwing themselves yes like that around. Throw yourselves at me. I'm doing well in Burma, um, and in like uh, heading down towards Singapore, and I've definitely, uh, th you know, 
got, caught the ire of the Soviet military. That's definitely a thing that happened. And I'm, I'm making gains in some places, falling back in others, but overall doing well. So let's attack this guy from three directions. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to cool my tits, considering uh, I'm starting with the... Uh, the weather is not very good over here. Who knew Siberia was, uh, frosty? <laughs> well, you should consider in the U4 <laughs> game that you keep talking about, like, permafrost futures and how you're mining <laughs> permafrost considering for, you know, I have the dead Siberia, mammoth meat. Siberia boner. I don't know, when did I start start that I love Siberia thing? I don't even remember. I... Uh. Ah, yes. I finally uh, beat back the, the division uh, um, defending Singapore. Took a I while. I think it evolved out of uh, the Hoi 4... I'm going to use air quotes here, allied game that we played yeah, a while ago. Yeah, now, now I remember Where? when I got <laughs> when I got banished uh, as Poland to Siberia. Yeah, banished. We'll use that word. Oh, well, that's kind of what happened. I, I was not allowed to play in real land anymore, and my country just shifted to Siberia. Man, they are really whipping themselves in my These Indian... They're suiciding the Indians at me. But I'm guessing that the Indians don't, they don't really care too much about them, so. We are talking about like colonial Britain here. Well, I think I've got a good shot of, because the Soviets are still kind of horny for, uh, for Belarusia. Yeah. And uh, I think I've got a good shot if I just relieve or send some of my units and said off the front lines there to like the south, I could probably just come in behind him and then crush them. It is pretty thin down there, both on, on both sides. I mean, the Soviets have one, two divisions down there at the very, very south. Oh, they got some heavy tanks. You got some KVs down there. Ah, my cavalry has arrived in Siberia. So, am I getting, uh, night modifiers, fort modifiers? There. Oh, let's suicide some cav into this combat. That's what they're there for. It's very, it's definitely some tough, uh, tough going over here. I'm not running into supply issues, though, so my, the, the, the auto bonds have been working. for that. Yeah. The auto bonds are bonding. Ah, M British MPs, go fuck yourself. You just have British military police just hanging out over there? Yeah, yeah. They're, um, trying to, they're, they're, like, engaged in delaying actions in my advance on Singapore. The general, like, Malaya area. Alright. Finally crushed a lot of these British troops that are slowly down in Burma. Burma's turning into a fucking slog. Like, a hundred thousand men have died over here so far. On both sides. Oh, right, and I forgot. I built my, uh, I rebuilt my carriers. So now I have, uh, four brand new carriers to use. Forgot about that. Let's see here. I'm sure the British fleet's ready to pounce on the moment they leave Dry Dog. Yeah. Been, been there, done that. Rebased carrier. Got bit the planes there. Okay, very good, very good, very nice. Still haven't gotten all my troops to the, the Soviet front lines, though, so I still have more men filtering in to try to push them back. I just, there's a couple key points I want to grab. Is like I want to get their forward air bases so that they can't deploy from them. That'll help out a good deal. <laughs> there's N fighting Soviet NKVD troops. Well, you know, someone's got to encourage the tanks forward. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have... 
Yes, I knew I had another course. I have spare troops to use. Okay, okay, okay. Where are my transports? They're down here. Ah, I knew I had another co army corps somewhere. The the people who saved, uh, I think it was Okinawa. Ah, uh, yes, the heroes of Okinawa. Yeah. Oh, well, that was the, the fucking British there. God damn those sons of bitches. They they were very rude to me. All right, Singapore is undefend. Oh no, is it defended? I can't tell. They got transports there. I don't see any navy. Maybe they flew the troops out because their transports just left. But it looks like I'm about to take Singapore. <laughs> just give up already, Leningrad. Just give up. <laughs> We have one. Ah, yes, very nice. Very nice. We just took a key province. Yes, that 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 will uh, help shore up my lines. Fuck you, Mongolia. You're much <laughs> The Mongolian troops are nothing, but the Soviet troops in Mongolia, well, they got some they got some skills. A lot of casualties, lots of casualties. Still good on manpower, but a lot of casualties. Come on, you Romanian volunteer Nancys, get in there. <laughs> oh, right, they gave you, like, an entire army's worth of troops, didn't they? They did, and I'm putting them to use. Awesome. So what? how many... They, they get to slog through the winter into the Crimea. Okay. Sounds good to me. Nice. Singapore is about to fall. I wiped out the division defending it in, like, a three-month-long battle in the jungle. Rumble in the jungle! I'm starting to see lots do of Soviet conscripts. Do I smell an opportunity for an encirclement? I think I do. Where, where are we looking? In the middle of Belarusia. Where else? Oh, the, do you mean those, like, conscripts stuck in the swamps? Yes. <laughs> it's just, like, one Soviet factory's worth of men stuck in the Pripyat marshes. Well, yeah, that's the thing, is that they're, you know, like, yeah, let's, put, let's push it to Belarusia. You realize that, like... Half the country is a swamp, right? <laughs> Which, you know, if that's where they want to push in, great. That just means I'm going to come in behind them, cut off the infrastructure, and then they're going to starve to death while, you know, it's like Soviet Dunkirk, but there's no boats. <laughs> yeah, that movie's out in three days, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I need to go see it. It, it looks good. Um, I, I like it. In, in in my old age, I've become super, super critical of movies, and it's starting, it's funny, it's starting to rub off on my wife, too. And, uh, all, the only thing I took from that movie is that the British fire pilot clearly neglected all of his, his, like, Kentucky windage training. I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, deflection shooting, you know, leading a target. Oh. At the at the very end of, of the the clip, it shows this uh this Spitfire pilot and a uh like uh, uh a BF 109 crossing in front of his crosshairs, and in the very last second he like like it's like a 90 degree shot. He's cross he's crossing you know going like 300 miles an hour in front of him, and he, he look like he squeezes the trigger the second he crosses in front of the crosshairs. I'm just sitting there thinking, you are an idiot. You're gonna miss by a hundred fucking yards. That's all I took from that thing. I was like, the British fire pilots are garbage. Well, I don't think the audience is gonna. Know. No, I know, but I, but I'm a, I'm an ass. <laughs> Just stand up in the middle of the theater and go, no, he's doing it <laughs> he's wrong. He's doing it wrong. He wouldn't hit anything. It's not how that goes. Back in, back in my, I used to be really into uh, air combat simulators. Little true Strubovich. That was a great game. Back in oh, fucking like 2001 or whenever when it came, it's still a good game now. I'm thinking it might be time to pull the Marines out of the jungle because I don't think they're needed here anymore. So let's grab the Marines and let's have them uh, go to Bangkok. All Marines to Bangkok. And then I can uh, do something useful with you. Ah, uh, maybe maybe I should send my railgun on the autobahn to Siberia. You know what? You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. 
to Siberia. Blizzards. I care not for blizzards as long as the railgun can make it through the snow. They decide winter offensive. Yep. It's a um uh, fall of Singapore, disaster for the British. Awesome. German hey, ambassador pro pop -ups here. Yeah, German ambassador protests about Richard Sorge's arrest. And I got Hideki Tojo. Uh oh, they I think it let's see. For the Emperor! Loses officers, loses manpower, Japan gets bonsai. Oh yeah. Fuck, that's that's great. I'll sacrifice fifty thousand men for five percent IC. Hell yeah. I got the manpower. Bonsai! Every every everybody was bonsai charging. Do, 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 do. Secure all the pop-ups. So, ooh, this is interesting. Soviet tanks versus Japanese tanks. Everybody was bonsai charging. <laughs> That's racist. I don't care. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, I think, my, I think my favorite comment I've had since I started doing Kaiserite the other day. Um, at, the, at the very beginning of it, I, I was just like, okay, it's time for, we're going to play some Kaiserite because everybody's been begging me to play this. And somebody goes, I, I didn't see any comments begging you. Where did you get that from? I'm just I was like, okay, okay. I'm, I'm sure you have access to all of my personal emails and my Discord and PMs and. The yeah, hundreds there's, of there's comments I got from asking me to do that, I'm sure you know better than I do. There's a variety of outlets that uh, yeah. you know, YouTubers frequent. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, and, and, and videos don't just go up for a day and then die. They accrue lots of video, uh, you know, views and comments over time. Uh, that's definitely the number one, the, the, the highest requested thing I've ever had on my channel ever was Kaiser Reich Hearts of Iron 4. Ooh, I almost got my amphibious tanks. I would I would suggest if anybody is skeptical, I suppose, of that particular claim is to go ahead and join, you know, the, the Discord, you know, yeah, be like, hey. Most of that com uh, conversation takes place. Oh, I, I pause. I don't know if you're ready to pause it. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's where, you know, a lot of the, you know, regulars would be hanging out is on, you know, the Discord server because they're 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 fairly not saying that another YouTube viewer would not be invested, but if you're looking for access, I suppose, to you know a, a YouTuber, whether it's myself, Ben, or anybody else who's got a Discord, you know, jump on the Discord and be a part of that conversation. Yeah, that's where I, I, I used to read every single comment and respond to every single comment that, you know, that warranted a response. Uh, but, you know, as the channel gets bigger, that becomes less and less feasible. And basically what I d did is now, now Discord is where I do the majority of my conversing with my, my fan base. Whether it be the, like, the, like, there's been a, there's definitely a lot of, uh, VIP chat room that goes, uh, chatting going on. That's where all the, the Patreons go. Because it's a little calmer in there with fewer people. Oh, man. My, I don't, I, I don't think you saw it, but there was, there was somebody in my Discord the other day who was telling this story about how they they dug up like an STV Soviet automatic rifle and a Luger out of uh, like out of the, the the clay in a forest outside Warsaw and sold it to and sold the guns to to a, a local museum for a couple uh, for for like fifteen hundred dollars and oh, oh, it happened during the night when I was sleeping and I saw the conversation the next morning but about five minutes after he said that like Oddball went went on Google and found the images of the guns he had posted and was like oh you mean these guns this exact image these are the ones you pulled out and then linked an article of uh, 
uh, uh, that, that where, where the pictures came from, which was a so Soviet archaeologist from a couple years ago. Um, excavating a uh, the site of a, a battle, <laughs> and th there was there was there was it was, it was like, I don't know if you could. It's like I heard the groaning in my head about how bad that was. You know this this picture, this one, this from this. These are the guns you pulled out of the ground yourself. Oh man, that was funny though. There, there that was that was some that was some real public shaming right there. Some people some people have to learn the hard way. There's one thing that you gotta really put forward. Which is, or have it in the forefront of your mind when you go on the internet, is that if you try to lie to the internet, the internet <laughs> will call know. You out. They they will know. Like it it was it was so, it, it, the information came from someone who was already like known for telling dubious stories, and so the second the second that story came out, like I think it was Sergey and Oddball were like, this doesn't sound right to me, and then it was literally only five minutes of searching Google to to find the actual images. Then I hear full of shit. Yeah. Oh, we ready for uh, more? <laughs> what, what is that? What was that, Bob? More, more friendly partisans have appeared in France. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're angry at who? Uh, the Soviets. <laughs> okay, go get them. <laughs> We're so mad. We're gonna take up arms and defend Mother Germany to the fatherland. <laughs> mother, mother, fatherland. The mother, fatherland. The transgender land. <laughs> see here of course there there are a few that are like on the border that I don't have anybody nearby to though I think I've got who is this some light infantry is here you go deal with this boom yeah right, but the... otherwise everybody else has just got more partisan units available <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna be this minefield of part if anybody ever like actually wanders into France from the allies <laughs> you know, whether it's like a British naval landing or the, whenever the United States starts to join, they're going to have to wade through like, you know, thousands upon thousands of just like <laughs> French like civilians. Baguette wielding civilians. <laughs> We've sharpened yes. them to a point. <laughs> they make relatively good spears. That's got to be weeks stale for that to work. In any way, even that'll be like a mild irritant. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to rebase my primary battle fleet in Singapore. But we're out of time. Oh, we are out of time. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you've been enjoying the videos. You can go watch Bob's, uh, uh, you know, rendition of Let's Kill Some Soviets and Marshlands uh, by clicking on the link in the description below. It'll bring you right to the, the primary uh, playlist for, for his series. And uh, we will see you guys next time. See you later.